Hi, my name is Joe Lodigan from Joe's Camera and uh, I'm going to discuss the Kruger National Park from a, from a different perspective, of course from a photographic perspective. And what I mean different perspective is that the Kruger National Park is, is world renowned for its um, big five African animals and the, and the great vistas and the great plains and certainly one of the top five national parks in the world and probably one of the top two in, in Africa. For us, it's very special. And um, why a different perspective is because most of the people are, are going to the Kruger Park to see number one, lion, number two, maybe leopard, buffalo, um, giraffe, and all of these. But, but the gem in, in the Kruger Park and the eco ecology and the biosphere that creates this atmosphere and this environment for the, for the predators or the, or the trigger species to be, to be seen in their, in their wilderness is the trees and the plants. And um, in this different perspective, I'm going to concentrate on the Mopani tree, which is the most prolific tree in the northern section or the uh, western section of the Kruger National Park. And then the leadwood tree. The leadwood tree is the hottest tree, um, densest tree in South Africa. And it is so dense that it's, that it's one of only a few wood species in the world that actually don't drift. They um, actually sink if you put them in water. And the Mopani tree is special because it creates this um, autumn uh, atmosphere because of the different hues of colors in its leaves when winter comes. So it, it, it turns off the leaf and it goes from, from, from a bright green to a light green, to a light yellow, to a bright yellow, into a rusty red, into a very deep rusty red. And that, and that colors create, of course, uh, tick the box of uh, quite a few of the foundations of composition in the form of opposite, opposite colors, um, colors itself, shapes, forms, patterns, and then leading lines. So we're going to use all of that, plus, plus in the Mopani, slow movement to create a subconscious feeling that you get when you drive around the Kruger National Park and you're searching for, for, the, for the predators in the bush. So all you see is the Mopani trees that drift past and subconsciously that is the picture that you remember until you see the, the predator or whatever you need to photograph. And when you do that, the Mopani forms a very nice backdrop or not nice, beautiful backdrop, probably of the most aesthetic backdrops that you can get behind uh, mega predators and mega animals. So I started by the Mopani. Um, and what I try to do is I pre-visualized pre um, exactly what I've said. If one drive at 40 k's an hour and you drive for a month every day past these Mopani trees, you tend to get tired and fall so, uh, close to fall asleep. And all you do is, is you see this, this Mopani trees. If it was just a green, it would have been just one color. But because of the backlighting onto the Moponis, it creates this, this great color patterns and, and hues of colors and so on. So, so over here, we have the first one. It's just an idea if you isolate the leaves um, from the background. Now, that is the difficult thing in the bush itself is, is, to, is to let the, 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 the subject stand out um, from the distraction of the background. And here you can see that all I do is, is I just showed you what the leaves look like and you, so the first thing you need to do is, if you need to capture the, the Mopani tree, the essence of the Mopani tree and the leaves, and by the way, the, the leaves are, are, are very distinct in the fact that it looks like a butterfly. It's a, it's a dual, um, dual leaf and it looks like butterfly wings. So here, this is what the tree looks like. And, and, and what I try to show here is that the colors, very definitely, if you want to capture the, the Mopani tree, it will be in autumn and it will be with backlighting. In this specific image, you can see that it was, it was picked that the background is dark. In other words, the sun was shining right from 45 degrees from the top, so that the background of the Mopani, the other leaves that you see in the background, they are not lit. Um, and that's what, what one would like to get for, for accentuating the Mopani tree on its own. What you have here is, is you still have the foreground, uh, but you can see what, what the background does if it is a specific distance away. This is about a, um, a 60 to a 70 meters behind the leaves over here. It is not concentrating on composition this far. It is just showing you 
how, how to start isolating the tree. Um, and if the f-stop here uh, didn't allow it and it was like a f11, this would have been a smudge of colors of the background and the foreground. What you need to do is, is to isolate and get clean peaks. You see over there, it's all uh, clustered and shuttered. And, uh, and over here, we've got one area that's very clean at the bottom. And you can see the bases of the tree or the, or the tree growing from the one corner. It would have been better if that was starting round about here. But nevertheless, to try and get the background or isolate the tree from the background or any foreground, this was about the cleanest that I could get driving around. And then something like that. But here the trees are, or the leaves are already gone. That's what it'll look like where the grass has already died down in winter and there's already a graduate in. But this is the patterns, the leading line. The line goes from the one corner to the right corner and it, and it, and it blooms up like a finger towards the left of the picture. And it basically contains this rusty red uh, leaves that stand out against the green, um, um, overwhelmingly green leaves at the back. If it's a mixed color, it, it, it's, it's quite different. So here, this tree has got um, more red leaves than, than the mixed leaves like you get, for instance, in this tree over here. So there is a specific. This is what it looks like, and the animals graze, and the elephants love, love um, mopani trees. And this is a kudu, the shy kudu that hides. And believe me, if it moves a little bit towards the back over there, you, you can't see this animal. But... Uh, and of course, the leaves in front, it wasn't done specifically to make the kudu look good. It just shows you how camouflaged it is if you block, for instance, the body out and or if the antelope was towards the back. If, if it was far behind the antelope, it would have formed a very good background, background. This is what typically can happen. It just gives you an idea of the potential of the image. A very good lighting on the sand grouse. What grass is this, others? This is it's like grass on the grass. And, and look at the colors of, of the Mopani leaves that's sort of framing it uh, in the front here and towards the back with a specific light. Now, if that was a lion's head, if you're a lion person or some, some um, predator freak, and that was very low light with this colors framing it, it would have been a very, very good picture. That is just... Um, where the leaves are, are off, just to show you that if in a, on, a, on a shallow depth of field, you can just have the grass in focus. And in the trees, trees if that was leaves, colored leaves, it would have been extremely good because the background is just dark. So, so over here is to try and capture the, the essence of the Mopani. They always grow in these, in these clusters of, of three, four, five, six, and eight. And then when they grow older, they sort of break up and you have one stem or two of them die. It's like a, a survival mechanism. Like I say, it's the second hardest wood in the bush. And therefore, it is, it is very popular for elephants to roam in. And if an elephant breaks down the branch, it basically just grows back um, with only a little bit left on, on the tree itself. Over here, you get the essence of the colors. Um, it's like autumn-like Europe, the only sort of atmosphere that we have in South Africa that uh, with an indigenous tree that comes close to that with a, with a slight coconut um, graduate uh, falter. This image was picked because of the bonsai um, type of feeling that it's got. And over here you can see that the tree is actually pushed over by an elephant. And on the left or on the right here, it, it, any other tree would have been, would have been dead. But the Mopane tree just started growing from that lateral branch that's been broken off, and it just started growing. Um, and, and the shapes and the leading lines at the bottom, and then the tree growing from, from the dead, dead uh, tree stump is, is the opposites of, of life and death and, and vertical and horizontal lines. And we just stuck in a, a coconut just to give it some, some colors. Um, here, what adds to the color dimension of the Mopani is the fungi on the, on, on the, on the tree itself. And there are a variety of, of compositions, um, for instance, like that, um, that I've picked up. That, that, that is a bit too busy. But as soon as you go down, you get a very disciplined leading lines and patterns of the Mopani. So I was looking at, 
at the bottom. You can see on the left over there and on the right, it's a bit distracting the background. But this to me certainly resonates because all of us that's been in the bush, at some stage you sit down at the, at the base of a mopani tree. So the grass is very much part of the mopani itself. Um, so that is more towards the base. Here you get closer to what I, what I envisaged is... Um, it's one of Hardis's pictures, but obviously on the left there's a bit of a distraction of that tree there. If we could remove that, but it's certainly going to be a lot of work on, on Photoshop to remove some of these trees. Although this one would not be that difficult. But, but once again, uh, it's in the center. The bark of the, of the Mopani tree is also very textured and, and beautiful. You can look at this image over here. Is in itself, the detail is, is beautiful. A single tree with two lines, dark at the, the top, sort of clearly works. This is a um, young Mupani bush um, over here because of the, the dark top, the clouds, and then the one single bush creates that threes of composition, similarly with that one. But here is the sort of the image that, 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 we've, that I've captured. It probably took me about three weeks three weeks to get to something that's more disciplined to, um, to, to um, tick off the composition boxes. And sometimes it is unwritten rules like this because there's certainly colors as a composition rule or foundation. There are contrasts on, in colors. There are contrasts of, of light. Um, but over here, there was a bit of light, as you can see, light shining on the subject. And I think it was if it was correctly lit, in other words, over here as well, but the light is overwhelmingly on the grass patch over here and some of the branches over here. But what it does do, it isolates the background from the foreground. So this is very close to what I wanted, but, it, but, but the negative is it creates, it creates a lot of shadow um, because the sun shines into it and it's not li light enough. So, so as soon as the sun has appeared, um, you can clearly see that, that it's got not too much distracting background, but it's even. And it certainly doesn't reflect the colors that I've seen, that I've seen, as you can see over here. If there's light on the, on the, on the leaves, that's what you, what you get. When the, when the sun disappears, that's the diffused light on the leaves. So I know that the true colors of the leaves are that in the sun. So all we've done is, is we've just pushed the exposure up with that specific image. Um, saturate as soon as we push the light up. It's simple, number one. Number two, a little bit of the saturation was, was pushed and we, we got to that image over there. And that image, without anything that we've removed from it, the background, is, is still one of our top sellers. And it is a top seller because, because people resonate with, with the Mopani tree, but no one actually captures it. They drive past it and they would like, they, they are so focused to see the animals and the birds and so on. That, that the subtle colors and the playing of the, of the colors within the leaves and the, and the fungi on the, on the tree itself and then the fallen leaves, leaves that are all red at the bottom is, is sort of uh, subconsciously hidden with everyone. So that, that image, so you can see over there, if we go back to the colors with the sun, if you saturate it a little bit, you get close to that. Um, the, the contrast that was pushed a little bit brought out the dark in the bark, and then, of course, the white of the fungi. So that's the Mopani tree. It's selling as Mopani in, in my gallery, and it's one of our top fine art sellers. And there's a story to that that we'll concentrate on later, why specifically that is. A lot of photographers um, laugh at that, and they say, how can you take a picture of, a, of an image, you know, where you don't even show the tree and so on. But these are mostly the guys that, that have not even taken a picture of a Mopani. They, they hunt lion, leopard, and predators, and, and therefore, they make use of the, of, the, of the animal's behavior to claim fame subconsciously. So to go out and get an artistic picture like this, that actually sells compared to getting an interesting photo of a lion jumping on a zebra that sell only on a, in, a, in a coffee table book. That's the challenge. This one paid for the, for the trip um, over and over. There certainly are, are quite a few hundred images that one can take if you just go and take or capture images of the Mopani. The second one and the one that, that probably is the, the most creative and I can still um, 
enhance on that is the fact that this Mopani trees that you see in this, in this shot of here, if you just visualize a stream, in other words, if you moved past this tree, you would have, this leaves would have, would have created lines on a slow shutter. Um, so, so I try to, I try to capture the, or pre-visualize um, the, the fact that if you drive past and, and your eyes shutter, now as you get slower, you get the streaks of this Mopani in all its different colors forming different lines. So as you drive past and you slow your eyes shutter, you can see that this will form lines to the left or to the right. If I put the motion on the editing suite on, you'll see it. But this is not about the editing, it's just about the, the Kruger from a, different, from a different angle. And we're still at the, at the Mopani tree. So, so the other thing about the Mopani is I wanted to, to, to move and create an artistic image. Um, but there's certain elements that I still wanted. I wanted the colors, the various colors, to be lit in lines. And I still wanted some bright lines or some sun streaking through so that there's certain parts of the image that just had to be some sharp lines. Nothing else, just sharp lines. And to do that, I had to drive past and take, I took my long lens, a 200 to 400 millimeter, and I held the steering wheel with my knees, not, not, not recommended and not legal, of course, but that's the truth. And I held, handheld the 200 to 400 lens, um, and, I, and I reduced the shutter speed to, to so that you would never use it. Um, I'll see what the shutter speed was now on the editing suite. But you can see that, that it's still too fast. It doesn't create the lines. It certainly blurs the leaves and it creates a nice colorful sort of painted image. But the shutter um, is still not there. It's a bit slower. So you can see what I'm heading towards. It's like, it's like a, an artist of Van Gogh that was under the influence that just sputtered the, the paint. And if you look at for instance, that section over there, that's exactly what I mean that I wanted. I mean, this, this is like, this is, um, this is an image. So it's a real snapshot of the 40 billion years uh, of this planet's existence. And, and it's still the tree. It's just the fact that we've moved slowly um, or moved and, and, and the colors just streak. So this in itself is a painting, a painting to me. And you can go to the different colors and you can um, you can you can see what that does it's to me it's like one of the one of the greatest opportunities in the Kruger Park there's an there's the image itself um, that I ended up with with this um, and I had to focus on about a meter um, a meter where where everything else would have blurred but within that meter I would have got straight or sharp lines so so you must focus on a specific distance with a long lens and then when the trees are within that range, that's when you take it. This image would not have worked if I, if I focused on the trees at the back. I focused on the line that you see over here. And what happened is, this is the, this is the image, uh, of course the orange there, that's the diffraction of the sun. The fact that it's orange um, to me is special, it's not, it's not yellow. There are oranges, so the orange streaks are very definitely elsewhere in this image, as you can see over here, that's that's a reflection of the lens. It looks like, but you very definitely have orange streaks in that leads from that um, elsewhere on the image. As you can see in this image itself, there are sharp elements within the streaks. If you look over here, I didn't want only lateral lines or horizontal lines, I wanted the camera to shake, to, to drive in a movement and also as you shake with the camera to go downwards and lengthwards. So I created the Z, I wanted the Z or the L Z patterns that are, that are, that are um, duplicated. So that in itself um, is, a, is a composition. Um, the fact, the, the, the slow, the patterns that the slow moving or the movement of the lens created is is um, is a foundation of composition rule. The contrast in colors is a foundation um, of composition rule. The breaking of the rules in this image is another tick of box. The the, the light and dark opposing um, um, conditions are, are a tick of box. Um, the artistic and the movement is 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 
a tick off in the foundation of Fanatics. So all we need to do is, is to bring in so, some intensity. Um, there's another one. If you go closer, you'll see that it creates only downward streaks. So, so it's not, although that is very artistic, um, looks like a paintbrush. That's another attempt where the bush is in front and it was you can see there was no downward bump of the lens. I had to drive and then go through a, through a ditch to actually get that lens to drop um, to create what my final image is, is this one that, that, that resonates with me in the fact that I'm driving the Mopani felt and I'm driving the Mopani felt for most probably a month and, I, and I've got all of that. I've got the orange in the one corner um, and I didn't want to take that off. The orange to me is, is, a, is, is, a, is a breaking of the rule, number one. And number two, if I do that, you can see how many orange streaks there, are, there actually is or there are that leads into this orange. So this image is most, probably, is most probably meant to go real big and to be framed as a painting or in similar fashion as a painting. And that's why it is also one of the top sellers, the other Mopani tree. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. This is a new. This is a new image, but it's it's meant for the artistic level. This is one of my my favorite images. Is this one? It needs to be presented in the right way with the right light, and it 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 reflects what I what I can remember every time I come back from the Kruger Park. Is most probably that that you see over there. From that we go into. The Leadwood Forest. Leadwood Forest is, like I say, the, the, the hardest tree, the most dense wood in South Africa, um, and so heavy that it, that it does not drift on water, one of the few in the world. And what I try to capture here, and once again, it's the, it's the, the Kruger Park from a different angle, from a different view, is no other vehicle stopped at this image because I visualized that I wanted a, a, a leadwood forest, and I wanted a dead leadwood forest because what happened is, this leadwood trees that grow very old, it's the oldest trees in the, in the Kruger Park, they are specimens that, that has been dead for 500 years, and they've also lived for 500 to 1,000 years. So, so a very hard specimen, not, not any insect can, can, can drill into it. So it is also the fact that all of these leadwoods that you see over on the screen at the background of here tells you that that, that um, global warming is not a debatable issue in this specific image. There's something that happened to this underground water. It is in the Kruger Park. It is an untouched piece of environment. And for the 30 kilometers before Satara, uh, uh, from the, uh, approaching from the north, you have, you have about 10 kilometer strip or, of, of dead leadwood, massive leadwood trees that are all dead. And the only reason they can be dead is because, because of drought. Um, I don't, I don't, I can't see that there's any. I haven't researched it, but I, but it is a very dry patch. If in in the dry conditions, if you drive in this area over here, it's only dust. There's basically nothing that grows. So you can see that it's it's um, and and it is an icon species um, as far as I'm concerned. So this is what I saw. Um, this is what I saw as I left Satara. This is pro probably I think one hundred hundred and fifty. Uh, 105 millimeter, the macro lens, that shows you what I've seen. And everyone goes out of the camp, Satara, they would start looking for a line, but certainly very few people can visualize that there's an image over here. I saw that there's most probably over there is the closest I get of a lot of dead trees, like a graveyard um, of the leadwoods. What I, what I did also envisage is to have some of the zebra in a silhouette with the leadwoods, but without the smaller bushes or shrubs that detract from the background. It didn't work because it, it's, it's, it's too fady. There I'm still searching for, for the zebra and the mist. And I had the 800, the D800, and the 200 to 400 millimeter um, Nikon. And I switched from the D7000 to the D800. Uh, and what I try to do there is to look at the difference in quality with the extra 1.5 magnification on the on the on the crop sensor versus the 800's full frame and to see the final product. So over here, just to recapture, that's the D800, that's the D7000. Look at the D800, 
and 7,000, there's already a difference in, in quality in, in what I try to achieve. That is the D800 cropped to closer to what I want, and you can see that, that I have a lot of dead leadwoods in this one image of here. Of course, there's like three other trees in the back, and there's a bit of young ones in front. There's distraction in the, in the shrubs in the left-hand corner and the right-hand corner. And to comply with a clean border rule and composition, I had to get, a, get rid of, of the shrubs in the foreground. And you can see over there, there's a little branch sticking out on that side. So that can be removed. And if we crop it over there, we, we get to that. So you crop it over there. And by simply pushing the curves, it accentuated the depth and, and um, so the rule of compositions where we, we have either far or near or we have leading lines or anything that can create depth in the image works. So here you, you, the mist creates a very flat image, the haze, but as soon as the haze is removed it actually accentuates the depth because here you can see the darker the tree is, the closer it is to you and the lighter it is the more mist there is between it. So, so subconsciously, for the human eye, it shows you depth, although it's a flattened image in a 200 to 400 millimeter, it flattens the perspective, but the, but the mist in itself creates the depth. You can see it on any other forest-like image in black and white, is the, the darker it is, the, the clearer it is, because it's, 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 it's sharp to the eye. But in the normal image like that, you, you, can't, you can't really get the depth. So that brought out the depth and it's, and it's um, close to what I've envisaged. I didn't like the shrubs and the other trees at the back, but, but, but looking at this, it created the depth. So, so it also shows you that, you know, there are the dead leadwoods in, in front and there are some, some other trees that are living behind. I can't see whether that's leadwood or mupani trees, but certainly the leadwoods over here in this stretch have all, have basically all died out. So... That is, the, that is the other image. What we've done is just that one over here. I've put a slight sepia in before I, before I curved it. And to complete the image uh, called Leadwood Forest, there's a graduate tobacco gray filter on top just to balance the light between that image, as you can see, and that image which accentuates and brings the eye back into the midline and just to show to you what I mean there you can see the depth if I go closer the shrubs in front certainly shows you that it's closer to the camera um, a bit further away you see the brown of that tree the lighter brown it becomes the further it gets and so it plays in towards the back so although black and white there would certainly be um, it would certainly be, if, if one will do a noir or one of those um, uh, apps, it will work. This one over here, Ledwood Forest, framed, um, floated with, uh, with about an inch on the side in the gallery with a very thick wooden rustic frame. Works very well and it's one of our, our top sellers in the gallery till today. And it certainly is as well because it's exceptional. It can sell. It is not any other animal in that stretch where I was, there was no other person that collected an image in this whole planet, on this whole planet, that he sold. Sold not because of trying to just make money, but it is pre-visualizing um, the hidden gems or the hidden secrets of a wilderness like the Kruger National Park.